Where are the John the Baptists today who are unafraid to preach the gospel and lose numbers in the process if necessary? Not the purpose of it, but where are those who have preached the same message to presidents and kings as they do to the lowly people that come into their houses of worship? Where are the John the Baptists today? Not afraid to preach the gospel, whether it affects the finances or not. Whether it affects the crowd or not. A friend called me recently, he said, I'm going to a certain church and, and, and I, I hear good concepts, but I, I don't hear anything that convicts. They go right from the preaching into announcements and there's no, there's no conviction and I'm, I'm trying. And, and the pastor says, I, I don't know what that's all about. I don't understand that. I don't understand this concept of conviction. I tremble to think that it's possible that, that I or any minister of the gospel, that, it, that, that it, a message could be softened just to please people, just to attract people, to soften or preach less than an entire gospel without seeking God with everything for a Holy Ghost anointing to drive it deep into the hearts and bring conviction. And I trouble to think it possible that any preacher of the gospel could shut up the heaven and make converts twofold children of hell. That's what he said to these scribes and Pharisees. He said, you, you're making converts and you're preaching your gospel, but you are actually shutting the heavens and making your people two times over children of hell. I can't shake that when I think about my responsibility here this morning in preaching the gospel to you. Those that hear this on tape. You see, I don't preach to be loved. I don't preach to be accepted. Now, my flesh wants to be loved. But I'd rather send you home if you have sin in your heart and give you sleepless nights. I would rather you walk out here and say, I don't like that kind of preaching, but you are thinking about it, and the Holy Ghost is dealing with you, and you are being changed by it. <coughs> now, don't stop loving me just because I said that. The Bible said Jesus called his disciples together, and listen to these words, and in the audience of all the people, gave, he gave this scathing rebuke to these religious scribes, the scholars of his day. He said, beware of shepherds who love the praises of men, who love the social events to sit in high places and be recognized by uh, leaders and by politicians and want to be accepted. <coughs> I want to tell you, sir, if you're a pastor here and you're a toast of the town, something's wrong with your preaching. The Bible says you're going to be hated. The Bible says you're going to be despised. If you're looking for acceptance, if you're on the job, you're looking for acceptance, and you are hiding your light under a bushel because you would rather have the approval of your co-workers, you're not living according to the gospel. You're not living according to the 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 commission that Jesus Christ has given his church. Beware of those religious Bible people who seek the affection, the applause of the ungodly. A church accepted by the world is an oxymoron. In other words, it, 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 it's a foolishness. There's no such thing as a church that is truly preaching and working under the Holy Ghost, fulfilling the commission of the word of God that is loved and accepted by the world. It's impossible. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. If you were of the world, if you were their kind, they'd love you. The world can't hate you because you're of the world. Because the world does not hate its own. And this, I think, is the measurement of the Church of Jesus Christ. To measure whether it's fulfilling the mission or not. That's how you measure Times Square Church. 
the most damning, one of the most damning things Christ ever said. One of the most soul-destroying things Christ ever said. That just, I can't get it out of my heart and my mind and the conviction of it makes me tremble. I don't want it ever said of me. The world can't hate you, David. <clears throat> Jesus said they hated me without a cause. They had no cause to hate me.